What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today's video, we are talking about spring swim baits. All the different baits, the different styles, the gear, what you need to catch a big fish right now. Let's go. It is springtime. Along with this warm, nice weather comes allergies and uh, sinus congestion. So hopefully you guys can bear, uh, bear with me, I'm losing my voice a little bit, but uh, springtime. Now is the time to be throwing swim baits. Spring swim bait time. Uh, it's one of my favorite times of the year. Of course I say favorite anytime I'm fishing, but <clears throat> I've caught more big fish on these baits right here than basically other, any other category. And I'm sure Matt is the same way. Um, you know, swim baits, as these fish are moving up, they're feeding up and a swim bait, a big old meal is the best way to try and catch the biggest fish in your fishery and quite possibly the biggest fish of your life. So <clears throat> spring swim bait fishing, there's so many different baits on the market. You guys saw, I dumped that whole tub of just soft baits, uh, just as kind of like a little joke um, for the intro. But um, <clears throat> there's so many baits on the market, different style tails, different swims, different baits, soft baits, hard baits, all of it. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're new to swim bait fishing, or if you've sat around all winter and froze your butt off and now you're getting excited about swim bait fishing, hopefully this is a little bit of a refresher course. If you're new to fishing, new to swim bait fishing, hopefully this will get you pointed in the right direction. And then you could take any one of these different styles of baits and apply them to your fishery and hopefully catch you some big fish. Now, before we get started, <clears throat> like I said, bear with me with my, my voice. Um, if you haven't already, I'm gonna link below in the video description. Uh, it's basically a two hour seminar on swim baits that Matt did just a couple months ago. And if you guys are truly wanting to learn about swim baits, I'm gonna tell you guys to go ahead and go watch that. I will leave a link down below in the video uh, description to that video because I want you guys to go watch that uh, before, um, you know, this is kind of be like a refresher, a little mini seminar, if you will. We'll see how long my, my voice lasts, but there is so much great information in that seminar that he did. Uh, he covered all of this so far in depth. Uh, it would be great if you guys went back and either watched it again or watched it for the first time. Uh, and then you can, this will hopefully branch off of that and this will make a lot more sense. So in my mind, if I had one bait or or I was given the, the question, what is the number one bait to target the largest fish in a specific fishery? I would say a swim bait. A swim bait, <clears throat> hands down for me, again, it's just my opinion, it is the best bait, especially in the springtime, um, to take advantage and, and quite possibly hook those biggest fish, the biggest fish of your life. So if I had one bait to throw, try to catch a giant, it would be some version of a swim bait. Now I say version because there are so many different types and we're gonna cover all that here shortly. Um, <clears throat> but if you're, if you're that guy that's looking to catch your new PB, a swim bait is where it's at right now. Now with that said, there's been many days where I've went out and I've caught <clears throat> 15 or 20 fish on a big eight inch swim bait, right? So you don't, you're not necessarily, if you're doing it properly, you're throwing it in the right uh, locations and you're fishing it correctly, you're not necessarily limiting your bites. You can still get a lot of bites on a swim bait, um, but the goal is to catch those bigger fish. So <clears throat> let's get started. The number one thing, if you wanna get into swim bait fishing, and you want to purchase some baits. The first thing you need to know is what kind of bait should you be imitating? What kind of bait is in your fishery? Is it a 
trout, and kokanee lake? Is it a shad lake? Is it a gizzard shad lake? Or is it primarily bluegill, sunfish, that sort of stuff? Those are all really, really important things to know. <clears throat> the best way to know that, do your research. Jump online, uh, jump on social media. Maybe there's some lakes that are tagged that you're fishing. You can see what guys are fishing for. Heck, go down to the launch ramp. Talk to the guys fishing. Are they crappie fishing? Are they bluegill fishing? Or are they throwing power bait? Are they fishing for trout? So those are really, really important things to know um, <clears throat> because matching the hatch is really important. It's not everything, right? Some of our biggest fish we've ever caught are on a yellow hard swim bait in lakes that don't necessarily have trout, right? But it's a good starting point. You know, if you're fishing a highland reservoir, clear water, lots of visibility, and your fish are trout and kokanee eaters, there's gonna be very specific baits to throw versus possibly the wrong bait. So that is tip number one. Figure out what the primary forage is in your fishery, okay? So what I've done, I've went and broken these baits down into um, two main categories soft baits and hard baits and then in each category there's a couple different categories so we're going to kind of run through that and uh, you'll understand why there are so many different baits on the market and when and where their best uses are for the different styles so let's because i just picked up these baits let's go ahead and talk about your trout and kokanee fisheries. These are lakes that have, uh, the primary forage is, is trout, probably have stockings going on, maybe your local uh, fish and wildlife or your, your uh, whatever your fish and game or fish and wildlife uh, is in your state. Hopefully there's some kind of stocking program and you can learn uh, when the, the stockings are. You wanna be there a couple days after that stocking and, and catch those big ones waiting at that ramp for some leftover trout. But um, hopefully you can get some research on that and know when the plantings are, the stockings. Um, but if not, it's not the end of the world, okay? So your trout and kokanee fisheries typically these are gonna be a little bit colder fisheries. You know, trout kind of need um, a little bit colder water. Uh, typically, it's gonna be a lot clearer water. You know, out here, we get clear water occasionally, but some of those clear water highland reservoirs, typically that's gonna be the fishery. You know, your long, steep river arms, your real narrow but tall dam, lots of visibility, 15, 20, 30 feet of visibility, those are typically gonna be fisheries that have your trout and kokanee. Now with that said, the number one bait that you can throw right now for those types of bass or those bass that are in those types of fisheries is going to be a trout representation, either the Savage Gear or the Huddleston. Now what I want you guys to look at is the tails you see that tail that's what we call a wedge style tail now for some of you guys this is going to be review right but it's a good refresher course it'll be good for you to you know learn the different baits kind of just kind of refresh the different tails and actions and hopefully it will give you guys the right uh the right baits to pick next time you're on the water so this right here is a boot tail it's gonna have a lot wider kick and a lot more uh, aggressive kick. Whereas the wedge tail is gonna be more natural. This, t this trout is just swimming back and forth, right? It's just puts off uh, less movement. It's just a more natural looking swim. That's really, really important in the clear water. Okay, so if you're in a clear fishery with trout, these tails right here, okay? That's the Savage Gear. 
it comes pre-rigged with a stinger hook. A lot of the times I just take this off because a two pound largemouth can literally engulf this bait, okay? When you have that stinger down there, a lot of times it can get them down there in the gills and we don't wanna kill any fish. So if you think that you can get away with not running a stinger hook, get rid of it. So that's the Savage Gear. Beautiful swim, has kind of like a, a realistic looking paint job. The Huddleston, this is actually an ROF 12, rate of fall 12. That is by far Matt and I's favorite uh, swim bait to throw, the ROF 12. That's the, that's the rate that it sinks. It comes in zero, which is a floater, a five, a little bit slower, a 12 and a 16. Sorry guys about the wind, the wind's starting to pick up. But uh, both Matt and, our, Matt and my PB, my 15 and Matt's 17 both came on the Huddleston eight inch trout, okay? It's important to know that <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to have trout in your fishery to catch fish. Like a, this will work right here on Chickamauga, right? It's not, a, it's not really a trout stocked lake. That's not the main forage. You're talking gizzards and threadfin, but this will work, okay? But if you are on a trout kokanee fishery, go with one of these two, but more importantly, go with that wedge style tail. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Kind of has that vortex tail, uh, just a real natural swim. These fish in clear water can get a really good look at that, at that, uh, at that swim bait, at that uh, presentation. So you want to have the right profile and you want to have just that real, real natural looking kick. Now with that said, typically I'll flip this bait by the boat and I'll swim it by and I'll get my cadence going so I can see uh, what, how fast I want this bait to kick. Now, springtime, as it's warming up, these fish are getting more and more aggressive. I don't want this thing down there just barely moving, right? In the winter time, we're creeping it on bottom where that tail's just barely moving. Right now, we kind of want this thing uh, looking a little frantic. So you kind of want it, you want it swimming just enough where it's just a notch up from that casual swim. You want it to kind of imitate or look like it's trying to flee from something. Now, on these later afternoons, when this sun comes up and it gets warm, these fish do move shallow. So you can literally take this swim bait right here and go throw it just like you would a chatterbait or a spinnerbait or a square bill. Up shallow, chucking and winding and just getting that tail just kicking and those big teener sized bass just come up and just smoke this thing. Okay, now with that said, we talked about the Savage Gear, and we talked about the Huddleston. Couple other players in this category uh, for trout and kokanee. This has been a staple bait of mine for many, many years. I've caught a lot of really big fish on this. Uh, and just recently, it's back out on the market. Tackle Warehouse is actually carrying them. Um, they used to be called the Baitsmith Magnum. Now, it is the Hog Hunter uh, Mag X, I believe. I'll link everything down below in the video description. But this is a fantastic swim bait quite a bit larger than the Huddleston, okay? So if you're looking for a bait that looks more natural, it's a little bit bigger, check out this guy right here. Real nice fins, again, real realistic looking swim. Look at that face. Again, I went ahead and put a stinger hook on there. That's the Haywire Twist. We've talked about that in the past, about uh, running stingers. Again, if I don't need it, typically will go away from it, but the Magnum, it's a little bit bigger bait. So a lot of times when they eat it, they don't get the hook all the way. So that's why I run that stinger. But if I can get away with it, I'm going with just that top hook. When you hook a big one, we're talking eight, 10, 12, 14, right? When you hook a big one and you get that jig hook in the roof of their mouth, you have a lot more leverage than if you just have them on the little, the stinger hook or we're gonna talk about this later, but a belly hook, right? You got a lot more leverage, a lot more chance of landing that fish when you get them on that big eight, nine, 10-aught jig hook in the roof of the mouth, okay? 
But that guy right there, if you are, uh, if you're a, a seasoned swim bait fisherman, you guys know what bait that is. This thing is awesome. And I'm really surprised that now you can get them at Tackle Warehouse. So good job, Tackle Warehouse. So again, you can see that eight inch hog hunter. This is the Huddleston, that's the hog hunter. Now on the flip side, if you're a guy that's like, man, I really want to get into swim bait fishing. I don't wanna have to go out and throw a 10 and a half or 11 inch bait all day, an eight inch bait all day. <clears throat> I don't wanna have to go buy a specific swim bait rod or a specific swim bait reel. I want to go throw something in a trout or kokanee fishery, um, but I wanna throw it on my heavy jig rod. This guy right here has caught plenty of fish for me. This is the Huddleston 68. They call it the 68. And way back before they even made this bait, we used to take a razor and cut the tail off of the eight inch Huddleston. See the tail? And we used, um, uh, what, mend it, basically PVC glue. Um, and we would glue the bigger tail on the six inch bait, okay? Here's the eight inch Huddleston. There is the 68. So the benefit of this, if you're fishing, <clears throat> granted, I've caught plenty of two pound spots, spotted bass on this bait right here. Whew. Again, sorry for the wind. But if it's, if it's a confidence thing and you're wanting to throw a little bit smaller, just hoping you'll get more bites, this guy right here is a must. It has that same great tail as the eight inch, but it's a little bit smaller profile and these fish can just engulf this bait right here so if you're a guy that's looking maybe you're a tournament guy where you need to catch 12 to 15 pounds of spotted bass 12 to 13 14 pounds of spotted bass and you want to add a swim bait into your arsenal for the day maybe take a look at this got some other baits here for you too that will work but um you don't have to go all in i would highly recommend it this is going to have a lot more drawing power again i've caught several I mean, so many spotted bass in that two to four pound range on a full size Huddleston or the Savage Gear, okay? Uh, you don't need to be afraid, but if it's a confidence thing and you want to downsize, that Huddleston 68 works great. <clears throat> so that is, that's soft baits in that trout kokanee deal. <sighs> Uh, real quick, we'll jump into uh, hard baits and then we'll go back into uh, baits for your uh, boot tails, you know, your bluegill soft baits, and everything else. We'll just get the trout and kokanee stuff, stuff knocked out of the way. Now, we talked about the soft baits. We talked about those nice trout eaters, uh, the trout rep... The baits for trout eaters. Um, another key bait this time of the year is going to be some kind of glide bait. It's the Depths 250, uh, the Explorer bait by Bait Sanity. Fantastic bait. Now, with that said, brings me to my next point. We've been throwing swim baits for decades, many, many, many years. Matt, longer than I, he got into the big bait game early on, was one of the first guys. Um, I was a little bit slower to it, but with that said, all these baits that we're covering today are baits that you can go and purchase right now. There are so many bait makers and so many baits on the market that do drops and they do uh, limited runs um, and it's not, it's kind of pointless for us to talk about those baits because you can't go get them. Um, it's not a bait that's readily available like all of these are. Now with that said, we've played around with several, the majority of um, custom baits, you know, baits that are 250 to a thousand dollars. It gets crazy. You can spend a ton of money, ton of money on custom uh, swim baits. They work, but I'm not sure that they work better than a lot of the baits that we throw. You know, we've played around with them. We've caught fish on them. And um, 
I can't think of, <clears throat> I'm just running through fish catches in my mind right now of swim baits. I mean, I've caught so many on the bait smith. Again, that was a bait that you couldn't get for a long time. But as far as hard baits and stuff, uh, the majority of my bigger fish have come on baits that you can go to the tackle shop and buy. Don't get me wrong. I love the KGBs. I, you know, I love that type of stuff. I like, I'm a, I'm a tackle junkie. Matt's a tackle junkie. He's got glide baits custom made in his office that are 24 inches long. I mean, we've done the rabbit hole. We've done all of that. We still do it a little bit, but when it comes to confidence and it comes to fish produ producers and not having to, you know, jump online real quick and try and get a bait and then Worst case scenario, buy it for twice as much when people resell them. Um, you know, we, we've tried to uh, stay away from all that. Now, with that said, baits that are readily available, the Depths 250, great, great, big glide bait. The Bait Sanity Trout Explorer, great, great, big glide bait. Both of these baits Caught a lot of fish for us. This one's quite a bit cheaper than this one. Um, I wouldn't say that it, this one has a better swim. It has a lot of hype behind it and has produced a lot of giant fish, but so has this one. So <clears throat> those of you guys that know the depths, you know the depths, you know the, the potential. Those of you guys that know the Huddleston, you know the potential. The Mag or the Hog Hunter now, you know the potential. Uh, but this bait right here, readily available, swims awesome this wind just won't quit <clears throat> now when do i pick up the hard bait versus the soft bait in your trout and kokanee fisheries uh when that sun gets high and i'm fishing um say i'm fishing out in open water maybe i'm fishing a main lake point good staging area before these fish move to their spawning coves. Maybe there's some standing timber out off the point. Maybe that, that fish can suspend 10, 12, 15 feet down um, up in the treetop or something. It's gonna be really hard to throw this. Um, you can throw it right over the top, but you're not gonna get a lot of action. You're not gonna get a lot of movement. This thing's just gonna swim to you. Whereas this guy right here, it's gonna have a big, wide S glide, right? As you're reeling, this thing's going left, and then right, and then left. It has directional changes, uh, and then when you add a rod twitch, twitch, make this thing dart to the left or dart to the right, when you get near that area that might be holding fish, this is gonna work better than the traditional soft bait. Okay, follow me? Now with that said, this is considered what we call an open water glide. Again, you're covering lots of water, just real wide, slow, methodical glide, okay? We're gonna talk about cover glides here in a minute something that gets real more twitchy, a lot more action. You can work it a lot better, but open water, clear highland reservoirs, uh, lowland reservoirs. If your fish are eating trout, they are trout killers. You need to be throwing some kind of glide bait, larger glide bait. That's the S-Waver 200. This is the S-Waver 168, quite a bit bigger. I don't throw anything much smaller than the 200 as far as open water uh, uh, glides. I want that thing just, it's gonna have a lot more drawing power. It's got that big, real methodical, it just looks like a lethargic, lazy trout that's just meandering through the water column. Make sense? So that that is when I would go with these versus one of these. Now, typically this time of the year, I have both tied on. If I am fishing a trout fishery, I almost always have the Savage Gear or the Hog Hunter 
or Huddleston, a version of the Huddleston tied on. Those are the best baits. Now that I got those out of the way, now we can switch gears to everything else. The fisheries that have gizzards, the fisheries that have crappie or bluegill or threadfin, okay? If anything else, remember visibility, clarity. If you're in a fishery that has a ton of clarity, your best bet is going to be that wedge style tail and a big open water glide, okay? Now let's cover everything else. Uh, if I am in, well, let's go with the rest of the soft bodied swim baits and then we'll transition into the hard baits. We'll cover some more glides uh, and such, but uh, let's cover soft swim baits. This is the Matt Lures. Again, every video, just like every video, I will link these things down below in the video, video description. A different version of that Vortex tail. Okay, so if you're on a fishery that is primarily shad or thread fin or uh, gizzards, this is a great representation. Real soft bait, real natural looking, swims really good. Again, this time of the year, this is not the time of the year where I'm casting it out, letting it fall, and I'm just creeping it on bottom. Again, you can get up. These fish are going to be even in even in the the clear water reservoirs. Those fish in the late afternoon. They're going to move up to eight, six, four feet of water up there. And you can just run that shoreline and, and fish those baits. Same thing with these guys. These fish are moving shallow. They're going to be on the points leading to the backs of bays. They're going to be on the points closest to the creek channels as they head back. Okay, so throw that thing up there and just swim it back like you would a swim, uh, spinner bait. So that guy right there, it's a great one. Not too big, a little bit taller profile than than uh, than one of the, the Huddlestons or the Savage Gear. But again, you're trying to mimic the gizzards, okay? If I have lower visibility, so less than, say, six feet, that's when I go with the boot tail swim bait. Okay, the difference is this is gonna move a lot more water. It just it it's a lot more erratic. It just moves a lot more, and the fish can feel it. They can see it better. Okay, so low visibility. That's when I'm going with this style of tail. Now I do have a few different baits out here for you. If we already talked about the mat lures, if I am talk about here weedless in just a second let me uh let's go with these guys right here if i want just a chuck and wine bait i'm gonna go with one of these two guys right here this is the mag draft by mega bass this is the six inch this is the eight inch you can see quite a bit different size comparison right okay this thing swims really good at one speed you throw it out there or you throw it by the side of your boat, get that cadence down. You're going to see that perfect speed, that, that perfect handle turn cadence. You'll see that tail, that bait just pops up and just starts kicking perfectly. This is my low visibility, this one right here, the 8 inch, is my low visibility cover water, cover stained or murky water swim bait. The difference this has a treble hook, okay? It's got a swivel on it, so if you do hook that fish, wind break. So if you do hook that fish, that bait's up and away, and it has a swivel, so the bait is spinning, the fish can't get as good of leverage on it, the bait if it didn't have the swivel. It's got a little magnet right there, so you tuck this thing in, it lays flat right there on the belly. So. Murky water, stained water, that mag draft, eight inch. This bait skips really well also. So if you're a dock fisherman or you're on a fishery that has a lot of docks, this is a good bait for you. Now with that said, this guy right here, 
has been my little spotted bass killer. Fishing uh, lakes that have a lot of laydowns, uh, a lot of overhangs, water's been up in some places, so you have a lot of branches down hanging over into the water, and you need to get this bait up in there. This guy right there is money. That's a little six inch. Again, you can upgrade the hook. Comes with decent hooks on there. I usually upgrade to owner ST56s. Um, a little bit more stout of a hook. So that is a treble hook bait. You saw that. That is connected to the bait. This next bait that I'm gonna talk about is a line through bait. So literally the line goes through the head, the face of the bait, comes down through the belly and you tie on your treble hook okay then you put this thing back in the belly and it swims let me hook this thing right so i can show you guys it's going to swim just like this this is an osprey that's the line through osprey now the benefit of throwing the line through just like I explained the benefit of having that swivel on that other bait, when you get bit on this, this bait slides up the line and now you're just fighting that fish on that hook. So a lot of times, even with the big jig hook, jig hook baits, um, these fish come up and they thrash. They're throwing that bait left to right, left to right, and a lot of times you'll see that bait fly. When you're fighting them just on the hook and that weight of that bait is up the line away from this hook they don't have the leverage right here in their mouth going left and right to work that hook loose this bait's up the line so they're trying to spit this and it's a lot harder okay <clears throat> the downside of these style of baits they're not as weedless as some other options okay we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. Um, real quickly, I do want to talk about this bait right here. This is, it's quickly becoming my favorite boot tail style bait. See? This guy right here is the burrito. Mike Buka, burrito. This is the five inch, this is the six inch. If you're looking for a bait with a jig hook that you can just chuck and wind, this thing has a gaff on it. You're not gonna bend it out, but you can chuck and wind. This thing is so much fun. It fishes really well on the bottom too. You can see how it's got that flat belly. This is becoming, or I said that, it probably is my favorite boot tail style swim bait to throw these days. Uh, Matt and I have both caught giants on it. Uh, it comes in the six and the five, like I said, uh, I've caught more fish on the five, especially out here on Chickamauga. Um, the cool thing about that, that is our tactical shad color that we designed. Beautiful fit, a beautiful color, catches a ton of fish. But this thing, if you're looking for a bait that kicks, a bait that thumps, that you can literally feel in that rod tip, when, you're, when you throw it up here, or you skip it up underneath the dock and you're swimming it, do, 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 do. You can literally feel this, not as much as a chatterbait, but you can feel that tail thumping. It is so cool. If you want to feel, you know, a lot of the times when you're throwing these guys, every once in a while you can feel that tail kick, especially if you're running braid to leader, a little bit more sensitive than just straight floral, but you can feel that tail kick a little bit. This guy right here, you can feel it a lot. It is really fun to fish, especially, like I said, as it gets warmer, the water temps warm up, uh, the fish get more active. That is a really fun bait. Now, this is also a bait that you can throw year round. In the summer, when they get out on the ledges, when they get out uh, on those rock piles, those main leg points, or in the fall, when they're up shallow chasing bait, this works in all of those different categories. Now, just before I went on that little rant, I mentioned about how these guys aren't very weedless. They make it in the freestyle, okay? Six inch mag draft, six inch freestyle. I have that rigged on a beast hook. Again, I will link all of the different products down below in the video description, the right hook sizes, uh, the right colors, all that stuff. But now, 
Make sure I rig this right for you guys. But now I can take that same profile, that same tail kick action, and now I can fish it weedless. So if you're on a fishery, uh, <clears throat> has a lot of wood, a lot of standing timber, or you're on a fishery that the water's up, maybe you got uh, more than normal, more than average amount of rain and your water levels all the way up and you have a lot of submerged brush or bushes or, or anything like that, that's where you're gonna throw this style bait, okay? It's weedless. The other one that I like to throw is this guy right here. This is a Scott's Burrow. It's a little bit softer of a bait. I don't know if I have a package of these here, but these two, these two are my weedless baits, okay? Six inch, they swim really, really well. Uh, you can bend the hook up a little bit, so it's just up just a little bit to kind of expose that hook point. But this is something that you can throw in the grass, you can throw in the bushes, you can throw in the moving water as that that uh, moving water is bringing debris to you. You can throw this right up there in the junk and fish these guys right there, okay? You'll notice color. We talked about looking natural, looking realistic in that clear water. It's really, really important. When you're not in that clear water, visibility is everything. A little bit of chartreuse, a little bit of white, albino, you know, real kind of brighter colors, bigger kick. You want that thump so they can feel it. You want that brighter color so they can see it. So again, down in the video description, I will link all my favorite colors to all these baits, but I'll give you, um, my favorite colors in all these baits, but you can see fairly bright baits. Again, you're fishing these in stuff, you're fishing it in murky water, you're fishing it in, in cover, in bushes, and, and, and standing timber, and grass, uh, that is the bait you want to be throwing. Okay, you see the differences? Now hopefully, next time you're in your tackle shop, or next time you're shopping online, and you see the hundreds, if not thousands of different styles of swim baits and colors and everything, this is starting to make sense for you. All right. One, one last bait that I wanna talk about before we move into the, the uh, bluegill and the hard baits is this guy right here. The All-American Trash Fish. Now. This is the fatty. It's got a fatter head, fatter belly on it right there than the, than the traditional trash fish, okay? This is a fish on bottom swim bait. It's weedless, very, very soft bait. Everything just has a ton of movement. The fins, all the different appendages on this bait move really, really well. They move independently. So if you're on a fishery where the fish are stacked up on the ledge, on the bottom before they pop up to go to the back, and they're down on bottom and you need a bait to crawl, that guy right there is a winner. Lots of different hooks and stuff. I like the beast. It's hard to beat that owner beast. Um, but this is a bait that you can fish fairly slow, creep it on bottom, and is weedless. Okay. All right. I think we are done. Nope, we're not done. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk bluegill eaters real quick. Okay. All these other baits apply to fisheries that have shiners and thread fin and gizzard shad and <clears throat> even herring, right? But say you're a pond fisherman or you're on a fishery where they are bluegill eaters, even tilapia, right? Maybe you're fishing some southern lakes. Um, let's talk bluegill. Now that I say that, I think I forget, I forgot my number one bluegill bait. Well, let's start with this guy. This is the mat lures. See how natural this bait looks? You guys know what style of tail that is. A little bit more natural, kind of a wedge, a version of a wedge style. Look how pretty that bait is. <clears throat> really, really realistic. That guy works really well. I did not bring the bigger version of this, but this is the Savage Gear. Look at this guy. Little itty bitty wedge tail. Little itty bitty 
bluegill. Comes in a larger size, I'll link it down below. Uh, it comes in a, a size just like this. They swim great and they look fantastic in the water. Look at that paint scheme on there. Super realistic. So if you're in a fishery where the primary forage is bluegill, you gotta go with some kind of bluegill style bait. Now, traditionally, they're gonna be a lot taller baits than other swim baits. They're gonna be a lot, lot taller. I don't necessarily mind throwing soft bluegill baits. Uh, when you start getting into the larger bluegill hard baits, you wanna be careful. And we're gonna talk about that here shortly. The two other baits, this one's a new one. This one's from Mega Bass. This is the sleeper gill, okay? Sleeper gill. <clears throat> this is the All-American Sunfish. You guys heard me talk about the trash fish. This is the sunfish. Again, you see how floppy, how flimsy all of these appendages and fins are. Again, super weedless. So if you're on a grass fishery or you're a pond fisherman and you are fishing a, a, a fishery where primarily it's bluegill, you need one of these. I mean, you can try them all, but I would start with the weedless, either that guy or that guy. And then if I'm not having too many issues with grass or getting hung up, then you can go with that larger Savage Gear or the Mat Lures, okay? One other thing before we move into hard baits and then we'll wrap it up. We all know this bait right here. That is a Kitek 4.8. They come in 4.3s, 3.8, 3.3s, 2.8s, they come in different sizes. Probably 80% of the fishermen on this planet, at least in the United States, have thrown a version or a bait that looks like this, the Kitek. Real recently, Matt, he figured this one out. This is a little bit larger, there's two sizes. This is a bait that if you've been throwing a Kitek, you need to throw. This is super windy. Ooh. All right, let's try this again. This is the Swammer. Same style of swim bait. This is the 5.5, a little bit smaller but it swims a lot different than the Kitek. So as you start getting into warmer water, I'm saying it right now, this is gonna be my primary uh, swim bait for that category. That Swammer swims awesome, okay? We've already caught a ton of fish on it. Uh, like I said, Matt figured this, started figuring this out last year, and uh, we were just down filming some stuff underwater, and I was blown away. So. If you guys like throwing the traditional 3.8, 4.8, 4.3 style swim bait, Kitek single swim bait, take a look at the Swammer. You can rig it on the jig hook, the Matt Allen swim bait head, or you can rig it on a beast, just like the trash fish. But that Swammer just has a different action, a different swim that these fish I don't think have seen, and they chew it. Okay. Now, with all of that said, let's move into hard baits. So in the very beginning, I talked about cover glides and open water glides, right? We talked about this guy right here. We talked about the depths, that real methodical open water, drawing power, methodical, lazy swim. Every once in a while, you give it a a, a, twi a, a real twitch or a rod twitch, that thing's just gonna just drift off, right? Then you're gonna bring it back. <clears throat> now let's talk about cover glides. This is, this time of the year, I don't go out fishing without some type of cover glide. 
Now we started calling this thing, I mean, we've always re referred to these as cover glides and open water guides. I see some guys talk about chopping baits and baits you gotta work. That's these guys, that's these baits that you add more action to. The reason we call them cover glides, you're typically ca target casting. If you look out here and you know that there's a rock pile or you know that there's a key piece of cover or structure that that fish is probably on, when you make that cast past that whatever it is, your target casting, and you bring that bait by, it's got a little bit tighter action. It's not as wide as the open water, right? So you're bringing it, it's doing the S deal, back and forth, back and forth, and you get to that area and you go twitch, twitch, this thing, do, do, and pause. That's when I smoke it. So when you are fishing key pieces of cover or structure, or you visibly see where that fish should be, maybe it's a dock piling or a shade line, and you're just reeling this thing along your cadence, and then all of a sudden you come by and you go twitch, twitch, and that thing does a directional change, and then a directional change, boom, that bass thinks, oh, my prey knows that I've been, knows I'm here, I've been spotted, it's time to kill. And that is nine times out of 10 when you're gonna get your bite. As far as the open water glides, the cadence, you know, eight, nine, ten handle turns as that bait is kind of just creeping along, twitch, twitch, give that thing just a little bit of directional change. As far as these, as far as the cover glides, you're talking every five or six handle turns, real, 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 twitch, twitch. You want that twitch, twitch, because what this thing's gonna do. Depending on when you do the twitch, it's either gonna break right and then left, or left and then right, okay? So it's really important. So it's real, 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 real. Twitch, twitch, real, real, real. Uh, when you do that second twitch, don't just pause it and let that, ball, that bait sink. You wanna keep swimming, but that twitch, twitch, swim, okay? really really important but that is why we always have a cover glide tied on that is the s waiver 166 or 168 i can't tell you how many um <clears throat> big fish we've caught on it it's been around for years uh one of the basic entry level glide baits you can get but it still produces giants that is by far our favorite color that is light trout uh another color we designed a long long time ago that is warden can you guys see that? I don't know if you guys can see all the teeth marks in this bait. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> again, a visibility thing. If I'm fishing shallow and the water's murky, it's a visibility thing. So I'm not going ghosty. I'm not going real natural colors. I'm looking for something a little bit brighter. With that said, the Sneaky Pete, another bait. This one actually comes with uh, built-in swivels for the hook hangers. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about that uh, that leverage again. When those fish bite that bait and they're trying to throw it, those hook hangers, those swiveling hook hangers really help out. <clears throat> the Papa Pete, quite a bit bigger than the Sneaky Pete. Again, this bait works well um, out there in open water. And it works well in uh, in current. In if you want to get real twitchy with it, and uh, fish as a cover glide, it works well in that category as well. So those are my my three favorite uh, right there. So last but not least, let's talk about gill stuff real quick, and then I'm going to wrap it up with uh, some rod recommendations because it's really important for you guys to go through this whole process, invest your money in all this stuff. It's really important to when you do get that bite to have that fish on the right rods, you get that fish in the boat. So I mentioned a little bit earlier, bluegill baits. I don't like giant, uh, hard bluegill baits, right? They're typically taller. There's a lot of appendages that are, that are hard. In my mind, they just get in the way when that bass is trying to eat. So this is the junior, the Gantarell. Okay, this one, the Gantrell, the Gantrell Jr. are both great baits. This is actually, it's got two joints. And this is out of all of these, this is most like, it's gonna be like a glide bait. So this one you're reeling 
kind of like an open water glide and then you twitch twitch it breaks off and this one you don't keep reeling it twitches and twitches and then it just drifts and then start reeling bring it back reel 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 twitch twitch Doof. Doof. <clears throat> the key thing with this guy right here when you do the twitch just like a jerk bait you want to do it on slack line give that give that bait some line to drift off and a lot of times you won't feel that bite but you'll see your line jump uh, and you reel down and swing into the fish but the ganterelle a great bait another bait that has the swiveling hook hangers okay the bait sanity gill explorer this is probably my favorite bait in the category bait sanity came out it really hit the ground running a few years ago and came out with the explorer now they got the gill explorer several really cool realistic colors but again this is a gill glide so it's not too tall and my thought on that <clears throat> bass have a hard time eating that style of profile when you see a, a bass floating usually it has a bluegill or a tilapia in its throat it's because they're spiny they're tall they're hard for them to get down so when i'm throwing a bait like this i don't want a lot of bait in the way so i want it shorter i don't want hard fins out the side i want it as slim and as short as possible but still representing that gill profile excuse me you still want that gill profile so that's really important so that guy right there and then one other one i'm gonna throw in here is the battalion now this is this is a cool bait it could be fished almost like a suspending lipless it's a real tight action bait you swim it you can pause it you can get real aggressive with it but it it's almost not even a swim bait, but I threw it in here anyways because we've caught, Matt and I have caught a lot of fish on it. It's um, it's a very unique bait. And like I said, it's it, you can fish it over the tops of grass, you can fish it over the stuff uh, and pause it. It doesn't sink fairly quickly, but it has a real tight action uh, and it has that bluegill profile. So I threw that in there. That's another great bait. I do upgrade um, my hooks on all of these baits. So we'll, we'll link all that stuff down below in the video description as well. All right, so that wraps up baits. Let's talk about rods and reels for a minute. Bring these over here. It's really important, like I said before, it's really important when you're throwing these big baits, one, you don't wanna be casting the bait off. Uh, two, you don't want, you want the rod to do the work in the cast. You don't want your shoulder or your elbow or your wrist or your lower back hurting after a day of chucking. And with the proper gear, you won't have those issues. Yeah, you'll still be working some muscles. You probably haven't worked throwing a jig or a drop shot or whatever, but you'll get used to it. But more importantly, <clears throat> when you hook that PB, that personal best bass, all those hours, all those days on the water, you've tried to catch that fish or hook that fish. Now you have the opportunity to land it and have that memory. You want it to be a good memory, not a bad memory. I've had plenty of bad memories with bass fishing. I want those good memories. And with that gear, the right gear, you're putting the odds in your favor of landing that fish of a lifetime. So hands down, our favorite setup uh, is the Loomis 966 and a Tranks 300. Now, we're winding back in this video. We talked about jig hook baits, right? We talked about hooking them on that versus the stinger. And then we talked about treble hook baits. Okay. What is so unique about this rod, and it's the only one we've found in all of the different swim bait rods we've tried. I'm not gonna say 100, but we've tried a lot of different swim bait rods. We're always playing with gear. Uh, this rod, the way it loads, you can stick them on that jig hook bait and grind them and get them to the boat. You can also stick them on that treble hook bait and it loads deeper into the blank. And it's almost like a loaded up heavy crankbait rod. And those fish can't throw that treble hook nearly as easily as they could if you're fishing on a more stout of a rod. So typically you have your jig hook swim bait rod and you have your 
<clears throat> treble hooks treble hooks swim bait rod um this rod you don't have to do that if they are available hands down that is our favorite rod on the market because it is so universal and it can be fished you can fish all of these baits on that rod minus the small ones it's probably too big for the small ones um with that said there are some other rods that we really, really like and some budget friendly rods, different price points. You know, there's so many different custom rod builder, builders on the market that make great rods, but they're hard to get. Sometimes they're hard to ship. They can get expensive. So if you're looking for something in a local tackle shop or online, highly recommend these rods. This one right here, <clears throat> SLX swim bait rod. This is their seven foot eight heavy, okay? This is a great dock skipping rod. Someone's flying a drone. A little bit shorter, so seven foot eight. So making those, those casts in and around cover or docks, um, that is a must. Again, paired up with um, a Tranks 300. Now, in the past, we all used like the big round reel, style reels, the Calcuttas and stuff, but the, the Tranks, the, uh, the 13, the A3, the Daiwa, there's some really good low profile 300 size reels on the market that work really well. Now, since I'm looking at it, let's talk braid and line real quick. For the most part, even with glide baits, we throw braid to leader. So typically 65 or 85, 80 pound braided line to a 20, 25, 30 or 35 pound either mono or fluoro leader. Okay. When you're doing this right and you're swimming this bait by them, they're not looking at that connection knot that's 10 feet up that way, right? This is a big bait. It's got a lot of drawing power. They are focused on that and that's what they want to eat. If you're a guy that feels like, man, my water's super clear. I am going with the more, more natural swim baits. Go with your bigger fluorocarbon. Um, I personally believe you have more sensitivity with that braid to leader. You can just feel so much more. You can feel what's going on. But if you're a guy that um, feels like the fish are line shy, um, go with your 20 or 25 pound fluoro and you guys will be set, okay? Some other great rods on the market for swim baits. This is a 13, eight foot heavy, okay? So the Defy. Again, you're wanting something that has a backbone that can stick that, that hook, get good hook penetration, and then get that fish to the boat. That's another thing. If you're throwing these big baits and you jack that fish, you don't want to mess around and, and let that thing peel drag. And You want to grind that thing to the boat and get it in the net as fast as possible. So that Defy is a great rod. Um, another good price point rod, the Bass X. Okay, this one is the 710 Heavy. St. Croix, they run a little bit more moderate action. This is an awesome, awesome treble hook bait rod. Okay, sorry guys, throat's kind of tell me it's time to quit. <clears throat> Two other rods for you real quick. The Dobbins Fury Series. We all started, we all, Matt and I all both started on the Champion Series swim bait rods way back when. I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. The Fury is a great uh, budget-friendly rod. Right there, <clears throat> price point, I think they're like 140, 150 bucks, something like that. Uh, that's a great rod. The SLX is great. And then the Victory. Another one by, by Croy. This model right here, that's a 710 Heavy. Like I said, it's a little bit, uh, just like that Bass X, this is just a little bit, um, higher price point, but this is another good rod. It's a perfect um, treble hook bait rod, okay? Guys, hopefully that simplified it for you. There's a lot of organized chaos going on right here. There's just baits everywhere, rods everywhere, all sorts of stuff, but springtime, swim baits. If you are looking to catch the biggest fish in your fishery, the time is now. It's pre-spawn for the most part. Texas, Florida, your southern states, they're kind of spawn, post-spawn already. But pre-spawn, those big females are filled with eggs. They're looking to feed up. They're the heaviest they're gonna weigh all year. Throwing a big meal for them. 
that, that swims great, that looks good, it is the right profile, puts the odds in your favor. And when you do get that bite, make sure you're throwing the right gear, you have the right hooks, and do everything you can to get that fish in the boat. Again, it's all about making those good memories, not the bad memories. Um, and hopefully this video helps with that. Guys, with that said, I'm gonna call it quits. Um, <clears throat> sorry about my voice, sorry about the wind, sorry about the construction going on, or the drones flying, or everything else going on, but springtime swim bait fishing, now is the time to get out, chuck and wind, and catch the biggest fish of your life. Guys, as always, thank you for watching. Down below in the video description, I will link all of these baits, the colors, the hooks, the line, the rods, the reels, the gear, all of it. Uh, you can click on it, go check it out at Tackle Warehouse and uh, get up close pictures uh, of what the baits look like, the colors, all that good stuff. And if you learn something from this video, hit that like button. Remember to subscribe to our channel and we will see you guys on the next video.